Uh, I just wanted to say uh, I'm from Mali, but actually I'm working in the DRC, as she said, and it has been one year now that I'm living in, in the DRC. So when I was coming, I flew directly from Kinshasa to uh, Coventry. So today I'm going to uh, talk about the process that we have initiated in Mali uh, in seed, uh, farm, peace and seed rights in the Malian uh, seed legal and policy framework. So as Priscilla said, we have uh, initiated this process since uh, 2016 with uh, peasants organizations. Uh, but it's built on a very long lasting debate. As you can see in the context uh, since the year uh, 1919 when uh, Mali as part of uh, uh, a regional organization called OAPI uh, the African Regional Organization for the Property Intelle for Intellectual Property, when they adopted uh, a regulation that allowed for uh, PVP right, plant variety protection rights on, on seeds. So the debate started on what alternative could we think about to counter this type of legislations that now our countries are adopting through Africa. Uh, it's also uh, built on still the, the struggle and the, 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 the fight of peasants and the civil society organizations against the uh, legal imperialisms that uh, some organizations and countries from the Western world are trying to impose uh, some legislations and also uh, the, the policy framework in Africa to allow for a more commercialization of African agriculture and also to favor uh, more private sector presence in, in African agriculture, which is also a threat for family farming in general in, in Africa. Uh, in the context also we see a lack of interest but also a lack of uh, understanding of the states because in most of our countries we rely more on states to decide to take good decisions in the favor of uh, the, 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 the country and uh, the citizens. And we've seen that uh, in our countries it's not happening well because they are just importing solutions tested elsewhere when it comes to legislations or policy and things like that. But despite all this situation, the, there was still strong em engagement from peasants organizations and those who support them like uh, our organizations and uh, other civil society organizations. And through the evolution of this context, we've seen also that Mali adopted in 2009 uh, a new seed policy and uh, in 2010 a new seed law to uh, implement the ECOWAS. ECOWAS is the regional organization. The ECOWAS uh, seed regulation that was adopted in 2008 which reflects all that we've seen at the international level uh, on uh, seed regulation, seed marketing, and uh, seed distribution. Uh, in the face of this situation, farmers still demand for a, a, a strong fight against this uh, uh, presence of uh, legislation that are not in their interest and would like also uh, to understand more uh, to have a better understanding of the legal uh, aspects of the issue and also of the policy aspects and to be able, based on this understanding, to propose alternative or to propose reform, the, a complete reform of the, these policies and laws uh, to uh, defend their rights. So based on these demands, we, we came up as uh, uh, IRPAD is the organization when I where I was working in Ma when I was in Mali. It's a, uh, an NGO and also a research institute. And we partnered with BEDE, which is a, a French organization but uh, that has an office in Mali for a very long time now. And we came up uh, with this uh, strategy with uh, farmers that we've called uh, the SNP process. I'm going to uh, say what the SNP process is and how we have implemented it uh, in Mali, uh, the challenges that we've faced. And now, because it's a process, it wasn't just a project that we have started and ended at some point, but it's still ongoing in Mali. So what are the next steps and what we've learned so far 
as uh, lessons. Uh, the process, in the process, we have articulated the methodology around uh, five main activities. The first one was to, as the uh, peasants requested it, to analyze the legal and policy framework to have a better understanding of it, and specifically, what is the status of uh, peasants' rights in this uh, legal framework. Based on this understanding, to build capacity and have consultations to uh, kind of have a common position among farmers so that they can defend uh, these rights and uh, claim the changes in the law. Uh, to do that, we did also legal mobilization to create the opportunity to, to move towards the change we wanted and to engage state actors to come all together with state actors in a, 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 a bigger framework of dialogue and consultation to do what we wanted to, to do to ensure protection and fulfillment of peasants' rights in the Malian seed uh, legislation and policy. So uh, in the process, we have arrived to, 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 it was possible for us to build a common un understanding and a common position among the three farmers' organizations that uh, started the process before even IRPAD and BD could join them. Uh, because uh, these three organizations represent almost all the rural world in Mali uh, because they are organized across the country among each regions and they had different views, different positions and also different understanding of what we, 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 we've discussed, seed, seed rights, farmers' rights and things like that. So the capacity building and uh, consultations that we had uh, allowed us to come up uh, with uh, this common position to say this is peasants' demand for the change that they would like to see in uh, the, the Malian le seed legislation. First, to have a clear definition of the word peasants. And when we were doing the process, there was also some international processes going on, like the uh, UN declaration on uh, uh, peasants' rights and uh, those living in the rural areas. So we based some of our arguments on what was developed in this framework and a definition also of peasant seeds, the rights of peasants to freely establish collective rules on how they uh, use seeds, they distribute it among their own networks, and also the recognition and the protection of their collective rights. And to do all this, to save, use, exchange, and sell their seeds freely. To, to come to this common position, as I've explained, uh, there were some challenges because of first the different natures of the, the type of organizations that we had. Uh, for example, COASPE, which is a Co Comité West African de Semans Paysan, they were specifically working on only on peasant seeds they didn't want to hear nothing about other type of seeds. While other farmers wanted to have, for example, coexistence between what we call peasant seeds, which includes traditional and local uh, varieties, versus certified seeds, commercial seeds, uh, saying farmers could still be using those commercial seeds while producing their own seeds. And we know there are some implications on uh, producing commercial seeds. Even if now we, we, we are not seeing, for example, some claims on intellectual property, but the legislation is there, it's allowed. But so far, since there is no uh, big presence of private sector seed producers, maybe it's because there is no problem uh, at this level. But the opposition was um, <coughs> mainly on these issues. But we uh, managed to move beyond the, these uh, differences and find a uh, common position to say, let's not just focus on commercial seeds or certified seeds, let's focus on peasant seeds. What do we want? How do we protect it? And what are the, 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 the demands that we are bringing forward before state actors? And how do we uh, fight for this change? Uh, it's also based on the political engagement of uh, each uh, group. Uh, the three main farmers group, uh, peasants group that uh, 
engaged in the process, had different level of engagement. So it was also a challenge to kind of uh, surpass this uh, uh, different level of understanding and engagement. But when we were able to do that, it was also possible to do a legal mobilization to, to have the same understanding of what we really uh, wanted to do. Because when we did the analysis, we've seen in the, the, the legal framework that the words and the terminologies that were used were not reflecting the, real, the reality in place uh, and, and the reality of peasants when it comes to the use of seeds and uh, uh, their activities around seeds. So we've moved from some terminologies to, to use well relevant and adapted terminologies that we are now advocating to, to push uh, and to include in the, the, the seed policy and eventually the, the, the seed law. The first one is to move from farmers' rights to peasants' rights. When we started the, uh, the, the process and the discussions, we were first looking at Article 9, for example, of uh, the, the treaty, the International Treaty of, uh, on Plant Genetic Resources. But as we moved forward, we've seen that the declaration, uh, the UN declaration that was uh, under negotiation, came with some other new maybe aspects that was not included in, the, in Article 9. And that was Article 9 for us wasn't that powerful to represent what really uh, peasants want. And we said that Mali could go beyond Article 9, uh, e even if the government had already signed that and we thought it was a good strategy to say, we are just asking you to implement what we have uh, already signed at the international level. But we thought that that was an opportunity to uh, bring uh, new ideas and uh, new, uh, what to say, new terms that will really uh, reflect the, the reality of peasants uh, in the, in the, the field. Uh, another one is traditional and local seeds. The law in Mali used both uh, terms, but meaning almost the same thing. Farmers wanted to go beyond that because using traditional seeds and local seeds, uh, it was like uh, uh, the law was saying that these traditional seeds are national heritage. It means that they belong to all Malians. So uh, researchers can come take them, use them in their research and develop new varieties and maybe put it on the market and not even give anything to farmers who uh, took care of those uh, traditional seeds. Moving for these uh, terms to peasant seeds allowed us to, to show the, the, the power of farmers around those seeds, that to say that all these seeds are in peasants' uh, hands. And because it's them who uh, ensure the guardianship of those seeds, they, we need to respect all their rights, meaning that even if we need to uh, we want to access those seeds, we need their uh, consent, we need to tell them what we are going to do with those seeds, and we need to also share the benefits with them at some point if we uh, develop anything that were commercially used in the end. And the last point is to move from informal seed system to peasant seed system. Because in Mali, as I mentioned, uh, state actors they all qualify or call the peasant seed system an informal system, which is not, I mean, to us, uh, the reality, because something that is informal, it means that it's not organized, they don't have rules, they just are uh, there to use whatever they find and, and they produce it, which is not true, because peasants are well organized, they have their own rules, they know what they plant, they know what they, 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 they will harvest, and they know how they distribute those seeds among them. So we said, instead of using the term informal, we, 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 we use peace and seed system. And based on all this understanding and all the, the agreement on these terms that we are now going to advocate to insert in the, maybe the legislation, we engage with state actors to 
establish what we've called a multi-stakeholder consultative framework. We first organized the meeting, a multi-stakeholder meeting. We called all the key actors to sit and discuss all the issues and present the, the, the results of the process, the analysis that we've done. Farmers uh, also uh, could uh, uh, show how they do the, the, the seed work, what uh, they, they do to convince all these uh, external actors that their system is really a peasant system, well organized and uh, it deserves to be protected. So we've, the, the, the most, I mean, the, there are two big outcomes from these meetings. So everybody agreed to establish this multi-stakeholders framework, meaning that we all agree that we are going to work together for the same uh, objective, which is to ensure protection of peace and seeds rights in the Malian legislation. And we have organized also how this uh, consultative framework is going to operate uh, to meet and who does the secretariat and how the technical work uh, is going to be, to be done. So when we were also doing this, we've seen that uh, the government was initiating the revision of the seed policy. That was our objective to create this opportunity to revise the seed policy, but it, it ran randomly happened that the government itself decided to, to change or uh, to revise the seed policy. So we seized that opportunity to use this framework to produce what we call the contribution of the consultative framework towards the seed revision process in Mali. And we've included all that we wanted to, to include in this uh, uh, new seed policy. And we've asked a, a specific chapter on peas and seed system. And we've described what is the seed system and what we want to, to include there, the definitions that we wanted and all the elements that should uh, be included in a seed system, peas and seed system. So that was almost towards the end of 2018. And at that time, I was also leaving Mali to, to the DRC. After that, we decided to be monitoring the seed policy uh, review process. So it's ongoing. The new seed policy has not been adopted yet. So we are uh, monitoring this and also advocating uh, for the revision of the seed law because it may not be automatic after the revision of the seed policy that the seed law would also follow, would be revised. But the, this is our, one of our target to, to also achieve the revision of uh, seed law. To also scale up the process, we, when we were doing this, we used to invite people from West Africa and from the international level. They all saw it as an innovative process and uh, asked us to maybe assist them in starting the same process in their country. Burkina Faso, for example, have started with uh, Fian, and we've uh, traveled there to assist them. And some other countries are uh, contemplating the idea of doing it. We are also targeting the regional level, because countries are sometimes are just implementing what is decided at the regional level. So if we happen maybe to uh, do something at the country level, we, uh, regional level, that can influence other countries to do. We are also documenting the process. Priscilla mentioned the article we are writing. Uh, we are also doing a, a big report, which is not just an activity report, but something that can be used by others to duplicate what we are doing here. We've learned some lessons, and these are the key ones that I wanted to share with you. The first one is that we, we need to consider peasants as uh, how to say, they have knowledge. They know what they want and they, they know how to do it. They just don't maybe understand some dimensions and specifically legal and policy. So you have to have an horizontal dialogue with them to learn from them and assist in what they want to do. State actors, sometimes they, they are really open and inclined to support, but they need information, awareness raising, and also sometimes 
they forgot about their own, the, their own role in public service. Uh, uh, the process, as I said, proved to be really constructive. We've seen some emerging results and uh, it's very uh, kind of uh, encouraging. And all, uh, all the actors were really involved and saw it as a constructive process. The legal activism and what we have been doing, it's really challenging. It's a political and iterative process and we're still on it. It's not finished yet. So these are some key lessons I wanted to uh, share and end with this picture. This is one of our meetings uh, that we had in, in Mali in, that was in 2016, December, what we call the convergence meeting. Uh, maybe you, you, you recognize some of the people here, but you, you won't see any lady here because maybe some, the person who took the picture was a lady. <laughs> and ladies are also part of the, uh, women are part of the, 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 the process, but this also represents the reality of Malian peasants organizations. It's m mostly men. So I wanted to end also uh, with this picture to, to, to come, I mean, pass this message and see uh, what we can do about that to maybe empower women or bring them, talk to those men to include more women and move forward. I thank you for your attention. And this is, this is not German. <laughs> when somebody saw it, he thought, she thought it was maybe a typo in English. Voila. Maybe uh, Michelle know what it is. Can you read it? And oh yes, and the C is Che. I need Che. It means thank you in my language, Bambara. Thank you. <laughs> Let me sit here.